The message this morning is nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing. Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It all has to do with the blood. Amen. Let me start by just reading a poem quickly. And then we'll get into the message. The jeering crowds mock some more as struggling with the cross he fell. Hit and bruised and bleeding that he was weak could tell. Whipped many times to make him stand and proceed along the way. Pulled in a man to give a hand so that on track could stay. The shout became louder as he went. The taunting did not stop. Bent on their evil intent. To them he was just a flop. Those that wanted to give a hand were rudely pushed away. No heed was given to the earnest plea, could not have a say. Numb with pain and bleeding, with the body beginning to swell, whip marks could be evident with bruises when he fell. Dragged and nailed to a cross with huge Roman nails, fixed to his hands and feet to ensure it never fail. Most of them never had a clue of who this man could be, that he was God in human form, part of the Trinity. The devil thought can win that day by getting him out of the way so that he could freely rule with the masses under his sway. Never knew about the blood or the victory it can bring, ready to defeat death and grave and remove every sting. Drop by drop as it went down and soaked into the ground, darkness fell and earth just shook and frightened those around. The devil ran with his odds to find some place to hide. Rocks split and graves just opened. Dead saints walked outside. The devil was defeated once and for all from that very hour. He was confronted by the blood that stripped him of all his power. Every sin, big and small, by blood was washed away. Jesus died on the cross, so God could have his way. Sinners now can be saints. This was God's plan, becoming clean in his sight, so he could take us by the hand. Sinners now can be clean. This was his ultimate plan. Becoming clean in his sight. So he could take us by the hand. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for the blood. We thank God for what he went through just for you and for me. And today as we sit in a Good Friday service, we sometimes wonder how did we ever get here. We know that the gospel story is really about two Adams. The one Adam that caused the sin. And the other Adam that came along to remove it. And when we think of the gospel story, sometimes we think of it as two gardens. 
the one garden called the Eden, where the problem started. And the second garden called Gethsemane, where the assignment was given to Jesus. Here we have Jesus with his distant followers, eight of them at the gate. He had eight at the gate. Some were distant in their following. There were three that were close by, Peter, James, and John. They were close associates, but they never really got close. They were not close in their emotions. They were not close with their feelings. They were not close with their fellowship. They were not close with their prayers. They were not close with their interactions. When they were wanted the most, they slept. And here Jesus was confronted in the garden with a cup that made him turn away and that made him ask God if it was possible. He said, Father, is it poss if it's possible, remove this cup from me. But it needs to be your will. What was inside that cup that made Jesus turn away and ignore and abandon? I like to think to this morning that it was the sins of the entire world, the murky sins, the terrible sins, the wicked sins, the vile sins, sins that Jesus needed to contend with and needed to deal with. And he holds the cup and he prays, Father, strengthen me. And as he prays, the Bible says, sweats of blood come down his brow. He prays. He prays for the entire world. He prays. Everything ninjas on prayer. Prayer was required. Prayers was a needful exercise. And as he concludes his prayer, we find soldiers marching in and they rough him up and they take him. They arrest him in that garden. And you know the story where one of the soldiers take a sword and they cut off the enemy soldier's ears. And Jesus quickly stoops down and he takes the piece of ear and he places it and heals. But nothing, not, not even this healing was able to shift those people from what their intentions were. And there they took Jesus and he allowed him to go through six illegal trials that night. And as Caiaphas and all of these guys. And in these trials he was kicked and battered and booted and bashed and, and spat at and insulted. And, and a whole lot of funny things till he finally comes before Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate's wife has a dream, and in that dream it was revealed that there was something special about this man, Jesus. And she hastens quickly and tells her husband, cautions her husband, have nothing to do with him. Leave him alone. You need to just leave him alone. He's God's anointed. Pontius Pilate was in a fix. He had a jeering crowd, he had a mocking crowd, he had a hungry crowd, he had a vicious crowd. He was a, there was a crowd that was ready to get violent on, on him. And he decides to back off. He asks for a bowl of water and he washes his hands. And he says, that is innocent blood. I want to have nothing to do with it. You do whatever you guys want. 
and they take Jesus and they give him 39 stripes. Not 40. 40 was the limit, but they were scared in case they miscount. So they stopped it at 39. And every time Jesus was hit on his bare back, his skin tore. There was much bleeding. They pushed a crown upon his head. Well, you claim to be the king. Well, now you're the king. This crown will now confirm that you're the king. And they mocked him as they put a purple robe around him. And that robe stuck to his body. And when they eventually pulled it out, it tore the flesh and caused more bleeding. Jesus' short stay with these guys was a torrid one. He had a sleepless night. It was a restless night. It was a worrisome night. It was a painful night. He hadn't eaten at all outside of that little meal he had with the disciples. And here he was in front of Pontius Pilate being mocked as the king of the Jews. And finally he's taken and he's allowed to go through Via della Rosa up a little passageway to Mount Golgotha. It was destined that he should be killed there. Before that could happen, we back in Pilate's hall, and Pilate asks the crowd, thinking that they will kind of understand, kind of reason, and maybe give way for Jesus. He turned around to the crowd and he said, Now you guys know that at this time, it is appropriate that I allow one man free, set one guy free. You choose. I have two people in the docks. I have one man, in fact, both of them are called Jesus. The one man is Jesus Barabbas. And the other one is Jesus the Christ. You know of Jesus Barabbas, he is a no good fellow, he is a terrorist. And every time we lose him, he goes out and creates a little bomb and explodes some little building someplace. He creates a lot of upsets and, and it's been a headache for the government all this while. And we have him here finally in the docks because we want to put him away once and for all. But then we also have Jesus the Christ. While we do have some good reports about Jesus, there were some mourners along the way. Those business people that owned the pigs were very upset when all the pigs went into the sea. People have spoken about this Jesus standing on a cloudy night and raising his hands and talking to the storm and stopping the storms. People talk about him touching people, the blind, the deaf, the dumb, and these persons becoming whole again. So on the whole, we have a lot of good report about Jesus. Pilate turned around to the crowd and said, consider him. Who do you think I should set free today? Do you want me to set Barabbas? Or do you want me to set this Jesus who claims to be Christ? One of the things that I'm not particularly happy about is that he is claiming to be king. But I'll let that pass. If you'll give him a chance and allow him to be released. The whole crowd shouted out, 
give us Barabbas. Pilate thought he was, he had fault, he had a fault in his hearing. But there it was loud and clear. They said, give us Barabbas. We want Barabbas. We want nobody else but Barabbas. Set us Barabbas. Set Barabbas free. And then he turned around and he said, what shall I do with this man? This Jesus who claims to be the Christ. With one voice, all said, crucify him. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. It became so rhythmic. Everybody shouting together. And the king got a little bit worried. And he said, listen, I wash my hands of this matter. I want to have nothing to do with this innocent blood. You do whatever you want. And there they take Jesus. They take him up that winding pathway. Jesus that is tired. Jesus that is hurt. Jesus that is, that is in pain. Here is this Jesus. Struggling to carry the cross. He had to carry his own cross and he was struggling to carry the cross. The cross that had actually been made for Barabbas became his as he struggled with that cross. He struggled, he tripped, he fell. They came and whipped him more. They shouted, go ahead, you carry! And they thought that all the whipping could make him hasten with his job. But Jesus faltered and he fell over and over again. And they got one of the guys from the side, Simon of Cyrene, and they got him to give a hand as he carries the cross for Jesus. They struggle along and eventually he comes to that spot where the three crosses are finally planted. Jesus in the middle with two thieves on, the other, on either side of him. And there they are exposed to the heat of the day. The dryness of the weather. And it starts to begin, it begins to tell on the three of them. The one fellow looked at Jesus and he said, Jesus, you claim to be the Son of God. Why don't you save yourself and save us? The fellow on the other side said, Jesus, remember me. Remember me when you come to paradise. Jesus looked at him and he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. We know for a fact that that day Jesus died. And that day that thief that no good fellow, that useless fellow, the fellow that was not worth to be in society, was taken away to be with Jesus forever and forever. And while they were still on that cross, soldiers came to break the legs to make sure that they stop breathing. And when they came to these two thieves, their legs were broken. But when they came to Jesus, they found that he was dead already and there was no need to go through that exercise. And Jesus' body was taken down. At that moment, heaven witnessed the scene 
And heaven responded. Heaven wanted the entire head to know that this was not a little thing. That this was a heaven thing. That the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were involved in this little assignment. Did I say a little assignment? It was a massive assignment. It was an assignment specially aligned to take on the devil and his odds. It was a time when the devil was going to be knocked off once and for all. And so what happens is this. That the moment the blood, the moment the life goes off and the blood starts flowing on the ground. All electricity is switched off. The entire head becomes dark. There is darkness on the earth for three hours. And during that time there's earthquakes. There's tremors. There's a shaking. Graves are open. And dead saints come alive and they start walking around as a witness. The devil gets such a fright that he runs for cover. And I believe it left town at that particular time. The devil was seen no more in that area because of the blood that was available. The blood flowed. Look at his head, look at his hands, look at his feet. Look at his side, look at the wounds that he had. Five terrible wounds. Two on the hands and two on the feet and one on the side. As the spear is thrust into the heart area. Scriptures say water and blood gushed out. Jesus died. Jesus died of a broken heart. Yes, he did. He died of a broken heart for you and for me. He died so that we could be redeemed. You see, there needed to be some remedy for sin. There needed to be some medicine or some portion or, or some kind of a recipe that can take away sin. And it was found that there was nothing really. Like the songwriter says, what can wash away my blood, my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. It was that blood, the blood of Jesus. And Jesus hung there on the cross with his hands outstretched. <coughs> seeing the jeering crowd, seeing them insult him and swear him, seeing him say all manner of funny things to him. And what was Jesus' response? One unbelievable line. Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus forgave all of them that punished him and hurt him and insulted him and inflicted pain on him. And Jesus is still in the forgiving business. And he forgives all of us here today. If we'll only come to him, he will forgive us for all of our sins. No matter how big that sin is. No matter how numerous that sin is. No matter how vile and vicious that sin is. No matter how hurting that sin is. Jesus is still able to forgive us 
for all of our sins. 1 John 1 9 tells us if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We become justified. It's just as we've never sinned at all. And it's all because of that which oozed from Jesus' side. It was all because of that blood. It was that blood. It was that blood. It was that blood. It was that blood. Jesus shed his blood for you, for me, forever. He shed his blood. He shed his blood. I spoke about two Adams and two gardens. And how nice to know that there's two countries or two cities today. That while we are here, God has come and paved the way so that we can be taken away and be with the Father forever in heaven. He's made a way of escape. We escape these roots, these, we escape these things that have become strangled in all of our lives. Jesus smiles as he looks at us today. He said something profound that day when he hung on the cross. There were seven things he said. And one of them was this one. It is finished. The job is done. The assignment is over. The mission is accomplished. That which I have been sent for, I have done to the T. My father is now pleased. The devil's defeated. It is finished. Jesus is not finished. It is finished. The assignment is finished. The job is finished. The devil is finished. He is cooked. He is, it's over with him. And we overcome him. Who? The devil. By the blood of the Lord. And the word of our testimony. So we have a testimony today. Our testimony is this one. That Jesus came. And he picked us up. Jesus came. And he picked us up. He never left us down. We're not floating down there. We're not sinking down there. He picked us up and this is what he's done he's placed our feet on higher ground we can look up look down from up and say devil you can't touch me now I tell you this much you can't touch me now 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 devil you can't touch me now I can laugh at you devil because you can't touch me now you cannot touch me now I'm in the bloodline the blood of Jesus Christ has set me free. The blood of Jesus Christ is covering me. The blood of Jesus Christ is always rescuing me. It is all about the blood of Jesus. Shall we stand? Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. They took Jesus' body from the cross. They shook their heads as a sign that it was finished. They took the lifeless body to go and put it in a tomb. But there was a big surprise waiting for all of them. Sunday was coming. That was Friday! Sunday is coming! 
Sunday is coming, Sunday is coming, Sunday is coming. Not someday, Sunday is coming. Praise his name. Father, we thank you. We thank you, my God, for your graciousness and for your power. We thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you for the blood that was shed to wash us from all of our sins. We free, Lord. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. Would you like to say it with me today? I'm free in Jesus. I'm free in Jesus. You, you, you've got to say it like you believe it today. I'm free in Jesus. Jesus set me free. Jesus has set me free. The blood has washed me. Guess what? I'm clean now. 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 Thank you for the cleansing, my Father. Thank you, my Jesus. May we go home, Lord, with hope in our hearts and joy in our souls, knowing it is finished. The work is done. You've done it all for us. Bless us and keep us in all things. For we ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For Jesus' sake. Amen. God bless you, church.